Mesoamerica is a region that extends from Mexico into Central America. The pre-Columbian inhabitants of this region had a well-established belief system that was embedded in their cosmography. This term refers to a specific view of the cosmos. This video will explain Mesoamerican cosmography with the goal of providing insight into the belief system of the native inhabitants of this region. Illustrations in this video come from a variety of sources, including Michael Coe's book on Mexico and the Maya. The message of this video is entirely based on a lecture prepared by Dr. Andrew McDonald. The ideas that will be presented are abstract in that they focus on structure, patterns, and relationships. This video does not dwell on the material remains of Mesoamerican culture, but rather on the belief system of this fascinating culture. It is generally accepted that America's earliest inhabitants entered by means of a land bridge known as Beringia that joined Siberia with the Americas. The first human migration may have occurred during a suitable window between 10,000 and 13,000 years ago. This time period could also explain America's first widespread Clovis culture that existed around 13,000 BP that are genetically related to modern Native Americans. The acronym BP, or Before Present, refers to the number of years before 1950. This is a convention used in radiocarbon dating. Mexico was also inhabited around this time. This picture shows 11,000-year-old mammoth bones found in the Valley of Mexico. The extended lower left leg bone suggests that someone maneuvered this mammoth into a muddy shoreline where it became stuck. Mammoths, mastodons, camels, horses, and other species became extinct in America around 7,000 BP due to a more desiccate climate. There is also mounting evidence that suggests that the Americas were inhabited before the Beringia migration window. For example, the Monte Verde site in Chile dates to 14,800 BP, and seafaring migration is now being considered. This does not seem unreasonable, considering Australia's earliest inhabitants arrived by boat around 40,000 BP. Genetic studies suggest that Native American cultures near the Bering Strait are tied to eastern Siberia, whereas Native American cultures further south are tied to south-central Siberia. This region of Siberia is closer to the Pacific Ocean than the Bering Strait. Japanese fishing junks washed up on America's Pacific shores well into the 19th century with the occupants alive and well. Although the New World was isolated from the West, it is likely that it was not so separated from the East. Mesoamericans started domesticating plants around 6,000 BP, thousands of years after the agricultural revolution in Mesopotamia. Their crops included maize, beans, and squash that they farmed using slash-and-burn, irrigation, and terracing. Farming resulted in a population growth, pottery, figurines, villages, a division of labor, trade, government, bands, tribes, and chiefdoms. Mesoamerica became the only place in the Americas with a phonetic writing system which was coupled with advanced calendrics. Unlike Old World cultures of this time, Mesoamericans did not use draft animals or metal tools. Although the utility of the will was known in Mesoamerica, it was not commonly used due to rugged terrain. This map shows the six areas of the world where urban revolution occurred independently. This cultural achievement is attributed to both psychic unity and independent invention. It is not well understood why Mayan civilization flourished in the difficult Paten region, whereas other groups in northern Mesoamerica remained nomadic hunters and gatherers. Mesoamerica was culturally divided between the north and the south, which were separated by the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. The northern empires included Olmec, Teotihuacan, the Tolec, and the Aztec. Southern empires included the pre-classic, classic, and post-classic Mayan city-states, other cultures in the region included the Zoke, Varra, Zapotecs, and Mixtecs. Glyphic texts found at the Maya site of Tikal document the arrival of foreign invaders from central Mexico in both 374 AD and 378 AD that has since been referred to as the single most important political or military episode of early classic Maya history. We begin our discussion of cosmology with the Olmecs. This vibrant culture lasted from 1500 to 400 BC in Mesoamerica's southern Gulf Coast and Mexican highlands. 
the Olmecs are considered Mesoamerica's mother culture. The Olmec stone heads shown in this picture are thought to represent specific individuals. The heads were carved in a workshop from basalt gathered from the Tuxla Mountains of Veracruz, located about 60 miles away. The Olmecs also made stylized carvings of individuals, typically with downturned mouths that resembled a snarling jaguar or a crying child. A ware jaguar is an Olmec totem that is a major theme of their art and ceremony. A crying child represents infant sacrifice, with tears for bringing rain. At the archaeological site of Coita in southern Chiapas, Andrew McDonald excavated a bowl offering containing a child skeleton that dated to roughly 200 BC. This picture shows a figurine that represents an Olmec shaman. Shamans profess to journey between worlds and negotiate with spirits, usually for divination or healing. They make this journey through altered states of consciousness, often associated with sacred ceremonies involving drumming, dancing, and at times hallucinogens. Complexes A and C in La Venta, Mexico, capture the Olmec concept of dualism. These platform structures are divided into two mirror image halves of different proportions. The smaller northern half contains enclosed tombs of two infants, whereas the structures in the larger southern half are open. There is mosaic pavement on both sides of the opening between the halves. These mosaics may have once been floors for ponds that are now covered with sediment. Dualism is an inherent human condition because our senses are edge detectors. Dualism in the East is traditionally inclusive and complementary, whereas in the West it corresponds to incompatible binary choices. In this regard, Mesoamerica has a more Eastern mindset. The octagonal Taoist mandala shown on the left has horizontal, vertical, and diagonal outside dimensions and a circular yin-yang core. Yin represents dark and feminine, whereas yang represents bright and masculine. Yin and yang have been described as complementary, interconnected, and interdependent. The Mayan bird deity design on the right has its head down, tail up, and wings to the sides. The wing on the right is marked with the Akbal sign for dark, and the wing on the left is marked with the Kain sign for light. The Aztecs believed that the history of the universe and creation was marked by the battles between the feathered serpent Quetzalcoatl and the multi-form Tezcatlipoca. Quetzalcoatl was the founder of agriculture and industry, whereas Tezcatlipoca embodied darkness and evil. They believed that birth and creation arise from tension of these opposites. The Mesoamerican feathered serpent itself embodies the concepts of renewal and reconciliation of opposition. The feathered serpent has both avian celestial and ophidian terrestrial qualities and is typically shown with head and tail divisions. Such a division can be seen on the temple of the feathered serpent in Teotihuacan, as shown in this figure. Quetzalcoatl, the Aztec name for the feathered serpent, also translates to precious twin. Likewise, the Quiche Maya Popo Vu describes prominent mythological hero twins. The Popo Vu is a pre-Hispanic document that was first transcribed into Latin, then Spanish. An earlier Olmec example of the feathered serpent was uncovered at the archaeological site of Tezutzukuli near Tonala, where Andrew MacDonald conducted research. On the left of the stairway of a central pyramid, there is a serpent head labeled Monument 2 in this figure, and on the right there is a serpent tail atop a squarish Olmec face labeled Monument 1 in this figure. The Olmec scepter shown below is a symbol of rulership. It also consists of a feather serpent design expressing a unity of opposition. This is a picture of a serpent mural located in Teotihuacan. The motif along the serpent body is interpreted as a mountain with a wind scroll top. This mountain theme is also found in an earlier Olmec tablet which substitutes the scroll for a cruciform tree and includes 1. an underworld enclosure below, 2. a world mountain, 3. a tree, and 4. an upper world on top. This compares to a Mesoamerican serpent motif where the head matches the underworld and the tail matches the upper world. 
The Olmec cosmology captured in the Dallas tablet was duplicated nearly three millennia later in the Codex Mendoza that portrays the Aztec territory of Samanahuac. In this codex, a flat quadrangular plain is penetrated by a vertical cactus tree with an eagle on top that symbolizes the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. The mountain and tree duo symbolize community for the Aztecs. A mural in Teotihuacan is another rendition of the mountain tree theme. In this example, the jaguar represents the mountain earth, a typical Mesoamerican association. A church altarpiece in the modern Mayan setting of Santiago Atitlan includes a sacred mountain as an emblem of community. This image depicts the sacred Aztec location named Coatepec, or Serpent Mountain. In this drawing, Coatepec rises upward over a watery base. This is where the Aztec patron deity Huitzilopochtli was born, raised, and armed. He later defended his mother by throwing the mountainside on the body of his half-sister Coilwaki, the moon, who was embarrassed by his mother's pregnancy. The Templo Mayor in the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan was a replica of Coatepec. Excavations of the pyramid base revealed a stone carving of the dismembered Coyilwaki. The mythical hero twins referred to in the Popol Vuh were widely known in pre-Columbian America. There are even depictions of them attributed to the Mississippian mound builders. In the Popol Vuh, the twins allow themselves to be killed then resurrect themselves, first as catfish and then as boys, that proceed to conquer the underworld Zibalbans. The mythical twins are likely represented in El Mirador, a ceremonial center in Guatemala's Paten region. Mesoamerican cosmography is visualized as a two-dimensional plane with the vertical extension in the middle. When viewed from the side, the square plane with a vertical protrusion is seen as a cruciform, when viewed from above, the plane is flat and has four corners and four sides. The horizontal dimension of the plane can be divided into segments signifying cyclical transitional development. The vertical dimension of the plane can be viewed as a stacking of the underworld, earth, and upper world and represents linear transformational development. The vertical extension protrudes from the center of the plane where both dimensions cross. In Mesoamerican cosmology, the location where vertical and horizontal feather serpents cross is noted by a portal door. These doors represent a threshold between worlds. While driving by a cemetery in the Mayan community of Zinacantan, Chiapas, Andrew McDonald observed graves covered with modern wooden doors. These doors were likely opened on ritual occasions, such as Day of the Dead, for communion with ancestral family members. Horizontal and vertical crossing serpents each consist of a progressive sequence from head to tail. In the same fashion, the San Bartolo mural is interpreted as a pilgrimage, culminating in renewal. There is a Mayan vase that also shows a leftward progression. In this design, the maize god follows a path towards rebirth in an underworld, watery realm. Likewise, maize seeds, as little skeletons, are buried in the soil to sprout anew. Izapa Stella 67 shows a person with outstretched arms and crucifix form emerging upward from a cross-shaped tomb representing a vertical progression. A similar modern-day ceremony is celebrated in Santiago Atitlan. In this ceremony, the Nab Esil, or priest shaman, extends his arms and the attendees pass by and kiss his garment in the navel area as a symbol of the rebirth of the world. There is an Olmec basalt sculpture on the top of the San Martin Pajaban volcano in the Tuxla Mountains of Veracruz. This sculpture shows a person raising the Mesoamerican world tree as a vertical central axis that people can use to take their bearing. This vertical orientation differs from the Olmec complexes at La Venta discussed earlier in this video. These complexes are aligned north to south which is a horizontal orientation in Mesoamerica, where east is vertical. The Olmec site of La Venta began to change around 600 BC. These changes included 1. 
the making of Stella in low relief with complex realistic scenes, two, the decrease in popularity of tecomates or necklace jars, and three, an increased production of composite silhouette bowls. However, the largest change was the introduction of polished or waxy orange pottery. These changes suggest the influence of a foreign culture. This influence is also captured in La Venta Stella III that depicts an encounter between a typical squat Olmec and a notably different bearded Uncle Sam figure. Around this same time period, the ceremonial centers in the Isthmian area began to change. The new constructions were no longer split into two parts and oriented north to south as found in La Venta. Instead, they consisted of three parts and extended east to west, or vertically, for Mesoamericans. The archaeological site of Coita is a good example of this change. This site contains a pyramid platform, a cruciform-shaped platform, a sunken pond, and a group of enclosed platforms. Around this same time period, Celt offerings appeared at La Venta that represent the world tree. The term Celt refers to a stone that was sharpened to become a tool. These offerings included a hematite mirror. The location of this mirror in relation to the cruciform Celts corresponds to the location of Coita's sunken pond in relation to the cruciform platform complex. The elongate D3 platform at La Venta is also from this time period. La Venta Altar 4 is a sculpture on the eastern side of the elongate platform. Altar 5 is on the western side. Both of these sculptures were early Olmec creations that were defaced, then restored as part of the elongate platform. Altars 4 and 5 illustrate portal thresholds that represent a vertical passage between the earth, underworld, and upperworld. Thresholds between worlds are not easily negotiated. These perilous times are often accompanied by a crisis of faith, where symmetry is broken and success or failure hang in the balance. It is risky to forsake a known way of life for an unknown realm. Rites of passage pave the way to success through submission, commitment to a higher ideal, sacrifice, and death of the ego. One's ego is the biggest challenge to disregarding an old way of life for an elevated, new life. Failure lies in attacking others as an outward projection of this inner struggle. The outward enemy is forever a mirage in a sea of endless conflict and disturbing cycles of boom and bust. Accommodation and ever-broadening inclusivity are keys to progress along the difficult straight and narrow center where opposition is balanced. Izapa and Tezutzukuli may have been strategically positioned at opposite ends of the Chiapas coastal plain in an effort to secure this corridor passageway. Later, the sites of Tiltepec, La Perseverancia, Iglesia Vieja, and Orcones were also present in the coastal plain. Stella V in Izapa shows the Mesoamerican vertical sacred tree with eight branches in the center of a horizontal earthly plane. The roots penetrate through the plane to the underworld and the branches reach upward. Stella V also has horizontal jaw portals to the left and right of the tree and vertical jaw portals above and below the tree. This Seba tree is thought to be a path for Mayan ancestors to climb into the world and reach the sky. The Takalika Va Stella IV shows a more detailed representation of the subterranean waters at the bottom of Iztapa Stella V. This stella has twin heads to the right and left of center with water flowing from their mouths. These heads can be likened to the serpent head and tail discussed earlier in this video. Elements of the Takalika Ha Stella IV design are found in other artifacts. The center matches the Chalcatzingo Relief 9, the serpent head on the left matches Chalcatzingo Relief 1, and the serpent head on the right matches La Benta Monument 19. These elements correspond to mother and child on the left and father on the right. A millennium later, a similar motif was displayed on a Maya mural at San Bartolo. This motif depicts three personages in the midst of water within a cruciform enclosure. 
the Kiiche Maya Polpo Vu may give insight into the identities of these three personages. All is at rest, nothing stirs. All is languid, at rest in the sky. There is not yet anything standing erect, only the expanse of the water, only the tranquil sea lies alone. There is not yet anything that might exist. All lies placid and silent in the darkness, in the night. All alone are the framer and the shaper, sovereign and Quetzal serpent, they who have born child and they who have begotten sons. Luminous they are in the water. The universal Mesoamerican creation myth starts with an empty ocean world where the male female fire god and the feathered serpent reside. This creation myth is also represented in the structural layout of Teotihuacan. This site is aligned roughly north to south, like La Venta, along a central avenue known by the Aztec and today as the Avenue of the Dead. A lesser axis runs perpendicular to the Avenue of the Dead in cruciform shape to divide the site into quadrants. The Pyramid of the Moon in the north represents the female bearer of children in the creation myth. The center pyramid of the sun represents the male begetter of children, and in the south there is a temple representing the feathered serpent. The Temple of the Cross, Temple of the Sun, and Temple of the Foliated Cross found in Pelenque are good examples of the horizontal and vertical geometries found in Mesoamerican iconography. The vertical dimension in these triad of temples symbolizes the sacred world tree as well as the human body. Modern Maya and Chiapas have expressed the idea that the human body has a skull in the head and at the base of the spine that are connected by a serpent. These skulls contain the essence of a person and correspond to the locations where the soul enters and leaves the body. This idea is similar to the Hindu concept of Kundalini, an ancient Sanskrit term for coiled one. In the Hindu concept of Dharma, Kundalini is a primal energy represented by a coiled female serpent located at the base of the spine. This snake can rise up the spine through the five centers of awakening to transform the practitioner. The idea of a central world tree is also shared by the Alchilpa, an Australian Aboriginal group. In their myth, Numakula created their world. Afterward, Numakula created a pole from the trunk of a gum tree, anointed it with blood, then climbed it and disappeared into the sky. The pole represents a cosmic axis that transforms the world around it to a habitable terrain. The Alchilpa travel with this pole and move in the direction the pole bends. The pole allows them to stay in their world and communicate with Numakula. There is a story of a time when a sacred pole was broken and an entire clan wandered about aimlessly until they laid down together and waited for death to overtake them. Palenque's Temple of the Inscriptions is notable in various regards. This temple was dedicated to Khinich Hanab Pakal, who was born in March 603 and reigned as Acha of Palenque from July 615 to August 683. He died at age 80 after a reign of 68 years. There are Mayan glyphs on the back wall of the top sanctuary that recount important events in his life. Pakal was buried in an elaborate tomb at the symbolically aqueous base of the temple. He was buried with a jade mask on his face and a carved stone sarcophagus lid that likely represented a door. The inscription on the lid shows Pakal on an altar in resurrection mode. His pose is similar to the personage shown on Izapa Stella 67 that was mentioned earlier in this video. Pakal's position along the Mayan cruciform sacred tree is similar to the position of the Australian Achilpa man climbing the sacred pole as shown in a previous illustration. The design of Pakal's sarcophagus lid with a lower enclosure and an upper cruciform sacred tree matches the layout of Koita's ceremonial platform complex. This figure shows a common Mayan architectural layout from the pre-classic period around 600 BC. 
The layout includes a triadic platform group with an enclosed patio in front. At Palenque, the Temple of the Cross, Temple of the Sun, and Temple of the Foliated Cross were also a Mayan triadic group. This same triad is represented in the portrayal of an Aztec ceremony that includes a center altar and flanking trees. This Aztec example is identified as a place of reeds with an aqueous base depicted as a water font and a ball court. The place of reeds is associated with Tolan, a Mesoamerican utopian concept. Ball courts were included in Mesoamerican ceremonial complexes since Olmec times dating to 1400 BC. One function of these ball courts was to forecast events. It was said that on an early sighting of the Spaniards, the king of Texcoco claimed that the Aztec Empire would fall. The king played the Aztec Empire, Monte Kusoma Zocoyotzin, in a ball game to learn the truth of the claim. Monte Kusoma lost. There are avian figures above the Palenque triad group. The Copan Rosalila center door design has a similar arrangement. This reconstruction suggests that Israel's Ark of the Covenant also included avian figures on top. Solomon's temple consisted of an outer courtyard, an inner sanctum, and a holy of holies. The Ark of the Covenant, with its companion cherubim guardians, were placed in the innermost sanctum of the holy of holies. It was said that Yahweh communicated between the two cherubim. As discussed earlier, the Aztec kingdom of Samanawak was pictured as a squarish plain that is divided into four quadrants and penetrated in its center by a vertical cactus tree and eagle, a symbol of the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. This geometry is similar to the primeval Mayan octagonal creation of fourfold siding, fourfold cornering, as described in the Quiche Maya Popol Vuh. Mesoamerican pyramids are the three dimensional manifestations of this fourfold siding, fourfold cornering creation. Sibling conflict is an important source of opposition in Mesoamerica. The hero twins struggled with their older half brothers, who were flautists, singers, writers, and carvers. The younger twins were mistreated until they tricked their older brothers into climbing a tree where they were transformed into frivolous monkeys. The modern-day Cholmaya story called Our Holy Father, the Son is Born captures a similar message. Our Holy Mother had an older son. Then came younger brother son, unbeknownst to the older son. When the older brother was at work in the cornfield, the younger brother was brought out by the mother to play. The younger brother was hidden but not in time to prevent the older brother from seeing toys. The mother had to tell the older son of his younger brother. The older son waited for the younger son to grow. When the boy was big enough, the older brother took him to the cornfield, but he only took him to torment him. The older brother recognized that there was a purpose in the younger boy and that he would become the son. The older brother was actually the real devil. He hated the boy and sought to kill him in the woods. He would place the boy on a rock like an animal and cut him into small pieces, which he would throw into a cave or into the water or into the fire. When thrown into the water, however, the boy would return home with a fish or from the cave with a tepez cuintli. The younger brother began to understand. He told his mother to clean some cotton seed for planting. However, he planted it in a tree where it changed to honey. It was the white kapok tree. It was the red kapok tree, but the honey was cotton. The boy told his older brother of the honey in the tree. Planning to do away with his older brother, the boy told his brother to climb to the top of the tree to retrieve the honey. When the older boy was climbing down, the younger brother asked for some beeswax to chew. The older brother got some and threw it down, hitting the boy in the head and making him cry. The boy took the beeswax and some thorny fruit and made a gopher. The gopher began to eat at the roots of the tree, and the boy chopped at the tree with a little machete. The tree fell, and the older brother was killed. 
The older brother was smashed to pieces. The boy returned home. His mother knew that he had killed his older brother. The older brother had no power to resurrect himself. He was only a devil. Biblical families included similar sibling rivalries, such as Cain and Abel, Ishmael and Isaac, Esau and Jacob, Reuben, Judah, and Joseph, and Manasseh and Ephraim. Typically, the younger brother is favored, especially in the eyes of the mother. For example, the Bible notes that Isaac loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. The Aztec tale of Tequiz Tecatl and Nana Watson is another example of this theme. In this tale, the rich and proud Tequiz Tecatl was selected by the gods to become the sun, and the diseased, poor, and humble Nana Watson was to become the moon. Transformation is by immolation, or killing. Tequiz Tecatl prepared rich offerings. Nana Watson offers penance, or self-punishment, and blood. Finally, Tequiz Tecatl poised himself to jump into a large fire, but stopped out of fear after four failed attempts. The gods then turned to Nana Watson, who, knowing what must be done, calmly stepped forward and jumped into the fire. Shamed by his own cowardice, Tequiz Tecatl followed. A disgusted god then threw a rabbit in his face and dimmed his brilliance. The humble Nana Watson became the sun and the proud Tiziz Tecatl became the rabbit-faced moon. As with the older and younger brothers, the first became last, and the last first. In the New Testament, Jesus taught the apostles at the Passover supper a similar message. The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth? Is not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. Bloodletting was widely practiced in Mesoamerica. This image shows a Mayan lord and his wife, who is passing a thorned cord through her tongue, with her blood spilling onto a bark cloth paper book. In an Aztec myth, Quetzalcoatl retrieved the bones of the ancestor fathers from the underworld realm of Michlantecutli. These bones were moistened by Father Rain, ground up by Mother Quilastli, and sprinkled with blood from Quetzalcoatl. Members of Aztec society were expected to let blood in similitude of this first act of auto-sacrifice. As discussed earlier in this video, the Templo Mayor in Tenochtitlan was a replica of Coatepec, or Serpent Mountain, where Huitzilopochtli beheaded his half-sister, Coilwaki, and threw her body from the mountaintop. Human sacrifice was central to the worship of Huitzilopochtli in his sanctuary atop the Templo Mayor. The Spanish soldier Bernal Diaz, who was with Hernán Cortés, visited the sanctuary before its destruction and wrote of his astonishment at the blood-drenched interiors and penetrating stench. The beating heart of a sacrificial victim was placed in a bowl, while the body was thrown down the pyramid steps, like Huitzilopochtli had done with his half-sister, Coilwaki. Huitzilopochtli was the Aztec patron god and god of the sun. He was miraculously conceived by the mother of gods, Coatlicu, and destined for rulership. Coatlicu's other children, including Coilwaki, the moon goddess, and the 400 elder sun gods of the southern stars, opposed his right to rule. Huitzilopochtli established his sovereignty by killing his sister and scattering his older brothers. The Roman story of Leto and Apollo is another example of a mother and miraculous child that was threatened with adversity. A fierce dragon named Python pursued Leto when she was pregnant with Apollo. The north wind rescued them and carried them away to an island out of harm's way. Four days after his birth, Apollo set off after the dragon and slew him as a triumph of order and civility over chaos and evil. In the book of Revelation, in the Bible, 
John describes a mother and a child under attack by a great red dragon. In this case, the mother is Mary, and the child and divine son is Christ. Human sacrifice and the selling of corpses in the marketplace were so common amongst the Aztecs that it has been suggested that sacrificial victims were a significant source of protein for the inhabitants of the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. Sacrifice for a larger cause is a bedrock of a vibrant society and personal growth. Rites of passage are a means to renewal and growth where old ways give way to a newness of life at larger levels of integration. The Aztecs sought to curry favor with Huitzilopochtli by providing a sustaining sacrifice of human life in a round of death and renewal. Victims obtained through so-called flower wars were honored for their sacrifice as we esteem our war dead. This can be likened to the plants and animals for whom we are grateful that are sacrificed for our nourishment. A number of Mesoamerican legends, including the Maya Kunsansum myth, are sequenced into four cyclical states of 1. an origin place, 2. a journey to a foreign land, 3. supernatural intervention at the brink of defeat leading to victory, and 4. apotheosis. There are similar widespread Joseph in Egypt stories that fit a fourfold model of 1. unity, 2. separation, 3. Reconciliation, and 4. Completion. Such a story can be found in the book of Genesis, with the personal and public exodus drama of 1. Eden, 2. Wandering in the Wilderness, 3. Inheritance, and 4. Fulfillment. This fourfold archetypal sequence can be numbered such that unity is 1, separation is 2, reconciliation is 3, and completion is 4. In this order, the sequence can be related to the Mayan glyphs for these numbers. The Mayan glyph for one is the young moon goddess. Two relates to the sacrificial flint knife. Three has been linked to the Quetzal bird, maize, and the phrase in between. Four is the age sun god and has been linked to completion. The Mayan sacred calendar is 260 days and cyclic whereas the Mayan secular calendar is 365 days and linear. This same dichotomy is represented on the Aztec sunstone. The 365-day calendar is represented by twin serpents around the circumference of the calendar that trace the daily course of the sun. The heads of the serpents are at the bottom of the calendar and the tails are at the top. The 260-day calendar is located in the center of the sunstone and is encircled by 20 signs each of 13 days. In the Aztec calendar, linear time has three parts and is vertical, whereas cyclic time is four-part, flat and horizontal. This geometry matches the Mesoamerican cosmography for a horizontal, flat, quadrangular earth plane and a vertical central tree. Mesoamerican calendrics include cycles within cycles, where junctions indicate thresholds and changing times. There is a cycle of unique days every 18,980 days, or 52 years. On the eve of such a cycle, the Aztecs extinguished all fire throughout the empire, and awaited the dawn and the start of a new 52-year cycle. At first light, a fire was lit in Tenochtitlan and carried by runners throughout Aztec territory. The Aztec sunstone is a quincunx with four corners and a center. The corners can be linked to the fourfold archetypal sequence mentioned earlier, where one, or unity, is Chalchuitliku, two, or separation, is Tiscatlipoca, three, or reconciliation, is Quetzalcoatl, and four, or completion, is Tlaloc. These deities can be grouped together into a first family unit, with Chalchuitliku as mother, Tezcatlipoca as the older son, Quetzalcoatl as the younger son, and Tlaloc as the father. The Aztecs believed that four sons were consecutively created, then destroyed, leading to the fifth age in which we now live. The early chronicler, Ichlilochitl, wrote that the first age of the water sun ended in flood, 
The second age of the earth sun ended in earthquake. The third age of the wind sun ended by violent winds. And the fourth age of the fire sun ended in fire. These ages can be combined with the fourfold archetypal sequence discussed earlier, where one represents Chalchuitliku, mother, first creation, and water. Two represents separation, Tezcatlipoca, older son, second creation, and earth jaguar. Three represents reconciliation, Quetzalcoatl, younger son, third creation, and wind. Four represents completion, Tlaloc, father, fourth creation, and fire. Mesoamerica's symmetrical cruciform cosmic designs, such as the Aztec sunstone, illustrate the principles of opposition, mediation, balance, and harmony. Illness and misfortune may be attributed to a deviation from these principles and a loss of balance or a fall. The ceremonial reenactment of creation stories helps restore that balance. This is done by ritually creating the world anew in a way that participants are themselves renewed and healed individually and collectively as a society through a unity of faith beyond time and place. Mesoamerican cosmic designs can be described as mandalas, a term used to describe a geometric pattern representing the cosmos. A circular mandala design shows the web of life where everything is connected, all things are one, and everyone matters. Mesoamerican thinking was characterized by dualism and animism, the idea that non-human things are imbued with a spiritual essence. This includes tables, chairs, animals, plants, images of Catholic saints, and wooden crosses. Animism includes the idea that all things are alive and communicate, and that hunting and farming are religious endeavors, undertaken with gratitude for the provider's sacrifice. Today, much of Mesoamerica's native religion is a combination of pre-Columbian and later Catholic Christian beliefs. Crosses, like the one pictured here, are associated with a fundamental Mesoamerican cosmic design consisting of horizontal and vertical dimensions, as well as Christianity's Christ on Calvary. For native Mesoamericans, the question is not so much about one or the other, but a complementary blend of one and the other. The Tibetan Tanka Mandala, shown on the right, is an intriguing counterpart to the Mandalic Aztec Sunstone, shown on the left. These similarities may be attributed to diffusion through contact, or to a psychic unity of mankind leading to independent development. The ideas of Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung provide insight into how these ideas may have been established independently. Jung describes certain symbols, aspirations, and behaviors as archetypes that are shared by humankind as a collective unconscious. It has been said that, quote, identifying these archetypes by probing dreams and myths, Jung fashioned his theory after the ancient quaternaries, best represented visually by the quadrisected Hindu mandala. His four archetypal functions draw energy from the dynamic antagonism between two sets of opposites, thinking versus feeling, senses versus intuiting. When one function dominates the psyche, its opposite is necessarily suppressed as the psyche's shadow. Past midlife, people become conscious of the limits of their dominant archetype and draw energy, constructively or destructively, from its shadow. Jung called this quest for life cycle correction, individuation." End quote. The Aztecs referenced Tolan, or Tula, as the place of reeds that embodied the precepts of the grand eightfold Mesoamerican cosmos. Accounts describe Tolan as a quasi-historical 10th century homeland metropolis of a chosen people called Tolex. The Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan was said to have been patterned after Tolan. Tolan allegedly thrived under the direction of the legendary, fair-skinned, and bearded king Tobilskin Quetzalcoatl. He was the first to teach the principles of community life, such as writing, rulership, building, medicine, and horticulture. The Toleks were later revered for their knowledge, wisdom, and craftsmanship. Topilskin Quetzalcoatl, the paragon of humility, abstinence, simplicity, and personal sacrifice, was pitted against the dark Tezcatlipoca, 
whose nature was rooted in pride, indulgence, gratification, and subterfuge. The two vied one against the other until Tezcatlipoca ultimately prevailed. Soon after, Tolan was decimated by drought and fell under enemy attack. As the Tolak people were hunted down one by one, Topilskin disappeared eastward, vowing later to return. Tolan was much more than a historical city of a particular time and place. It was a concept of an ideal world, free of barriers and obscurity, where vision is no longer limited by the horizon. Tolan is the Mesoamerican reply to the human dilemma of separation and unity. Like Zion, Shampala, or Caliphate, Tolan is a utopian idea, an archetype to which humankind is inevitably drawn. This image shows a model of what Tolan would look like as a representation of Mesoamerica's unseen world. The shape of this model resembles a four-dimensional hypercube known as a tesseract. This unusual geometry consists of eight three-dimensional cubes, each with six two-dimensional square surfaces. These two-dimensional and three-dimensional parts can be seen as more limited worlds within the larger four-dimensional realm of the tesseract. Modern popular culture has portrayed a tesseract as a portal across lesser dimensions. This video began by introducing Mesoamerican history and elaborating on principles, themes, beliefs, and geometric patterns common among the Olmecs, Mayan, and Aztecs. These same principles and patterns are also present in other cultures that perhaps shared a psychic unity with the Mesoamericans that resulted in common archetypes. These principles are captured in the concept of Tolan, as well as in mandalas such as the Aztec sunstone that geometrically represent the world's creation, the underworld, earth, and upper world. These mandalas have horizontal transitional periods defined by 1. Unity, 2. Separation, 3. Reconciliation, and 4. Completion, as well as vertical transformational growth through the quincux center. This central door leads to larger and more inclusive realms, each at a different level with the same four sides, four corners, and quincux geometry. These structures and patterns capture the relationship of gods, family, and stages of creation. The circular mandala also captures the web of a united community, where either everyone, everyone matters, matters or no one matters.